Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker and today I am showing you how to engrave cookie spatulas with your Cricut Maker and the Cricut Engraving Tool on the Great Maker Show and Tell. So when the Cricut Engraving Tip for the Maker came out this summer, I tried making everything and tried engraving everything that I could think of from aluminum and copper to dog tags and even mason charlottes. But I never thought to try a metal utensil like a cookie spatula, a pie server, or a turner. So when fellow blogger Jen Swift from Well Crafted Studio posted her engraved pie server in our Facebook group, I was like, are you kidding me? And I knew I needed to try it. And as it would happen, Jen graciously wrote an entire tutorial all about how to engrave things like this just for the Jennifer Maker blog. And in today's video, I'm going to show you what she is teaching us to help you make one of these awesome cookie spatulas. All right, so to engrave a cookie spatula, you're going to need a spatula with a nice flat blade like this one. You can also use a cake server. Um, a turner or any other flat metal utensil like this. I have a list of things that I've tried in the video description if you want to take a look. You're also going to need the Cricut Maker, of course, with the engraving tip. You definitely need that. Very cool, this thing. You need a purple strong grip mat, some painter's tape, and you're going to need a design. Jen made an awesome gingerbread man that is perfect, the size for the spatula, and it's particularly good design to learn on because it has a built-in way to align it that is perfect for those of us who are new to engraving on spatulas, and you'll see. You may also need some cookies, because cookies. <laughs> okay, you don't technically need the cookies, but they sure go well with this project, don't you think? <laughs> So let me show you where to get the free design for this spatula over on my blog, along with some templates for the other utensils that you see here, and then we will make some together. Step one, get the free gingerbread man pattern to make your cookie spatula. You can get the free pattern over on my blog at jennifermaker.com. I keep my free files in my library. So you click the red bar at the top and you click enter the library. You can also get a password for free if you don't have it yet. The fastest way to find the project, um, you know, browsing will take a while because there's a lot of files in here as you can see, is to search the page. So that's Command F on a Mac or Control F on a PC and then type in gingerbread. And you'll find it right here and you just click on it to download it. And then you open it to unzip it. And it shows up here just like this. For step two, you want to upload your pattern to Cricut Design Space. So click on upload upload image, browse. So here's our files. Now there's three things in here. The one that we want for this is the one that says engraved spatula gingerbread man. I have also separated all of the elements out in case you want to just uh, test how the gingerbread man or just the snowflakes or change the words or whatever. You'll note there's a third file in here called templates and we'll talk about that in a minute. For now open up this uh, engraved spatula gingerbread man SVG. And it will show up just like this and click save and then select it and then click insert images and it shows up on on your canvas for step three you need to duplicate a line and attach the design and this is very important especially to get a deeper engraving so what you want to do and this is true for all things that you're going to engrave is you're going to duplicate it two to three times i'm going to go ahead and duplicate it three times so I'm just right clicking on the image, I'll show you that again. So right click with my mouse and I select duplicate and I'm gonna do it one more time, duplicate. So now I have three identical copies of this design, but they're offset from one another, which isn't gonna work. So we need to make sure that they're exactly on top of each other. So we select everything. So we go to select all, and then we go to the align menu and we choose a center. And now they're all on top of each other. Pretty cool, huh? These images are now stacked perfectly and are going to give you a deeper, more pronounced engraving with your maker. For step four, we need to change the line type to engrave, size the design, and rotate it. So with everything still selected, click attach at the bottom right corner of your 
uh, canvas right here. It's very important, otherwise they'll be all over the place on your mat and you don't want that. Now you need to go up to the line type menu up here at the top of the canvas and change it from cut, which is always your default, to engrave. And now it will engrave it. Now the spatula that we're using has an engravable surface that is about two and a quarter by two and a quarter. Because of the room that the rollers on your Cricut Maker needs, Cricut automatically limits us from placing a design any closer to the edge of the grid than 11.75 inches. So those are two restrictions that you have when you size your image. So I think that th this design fits best when you change its height to 1.6 inches. And when you do this, the width will change automatically to stay in proportion. So double check the size of your spatula or whatever you're using. And up here, you can change the size. So we wanna change the height to be 1.6 inches, just like that. The last thing we do before we're ready to go is rotate the design upside down. The top toolbar has a rotate feature that is perfect for this and that is right here. Just type in 180 degrees like this, 180 degrees, and press the return key and it'll rotate it for you. And now we're ready to engrave. So go ahead and click the make it button in the upper right corner and it's time to get your mat ready. Step five, tape your spatula to the edge of your mat upside down. This is the part where we talk about the handle. It's kind of what made engraving servers or spatulas seem impossible, since the handle is too big or curved to go through the maker, right? The handle jams the rollers, but the flat metal part of a server or spatula can go through. The Cricut machine doesn't feed the entire mat through the rollers, so if we position our object so that the handle hangs off the bottom edge of the mat, then only the part that we want to engrave it actually goes through the machine. So with this project, you'll want to place your spatula's top edge so that it's at the 10 inch horizontal grid line and then center it on the six inch vertical line. If you don't want to eyeball the center, you can use a small tip Sharpie and a ruler to find and mark the center of your spatula. Center and position the spatula just like this. Now press down on its surface so you get a strong adhesion to your mat. And then very important, you must use some painter's tape and tape just along the edges. You don't want to engrave through the tape as this will gum up the engraver and it's a big mess. You just don't want to do that. And the Sharpie will rub right off if you do it right away. So don't worry about that. Just make sure that your spatula is really well adhered to your your mat. You have to use a strong grip mat for this because it's just going to move around without the strong adhesion on the mat and your painter's tape. Step six, move the design to the center and bottom edge of the screen. Now on the next screen in Cricut Design Space, you'll see a representation of the mat with your design on it. Drag your mat to the very bottom of this design, just like this. Okay, now you'll notice that even though we rotated it, it's not showing it's rotated here. I have no explanation for this. <laughs> so we need to rotate it again. So we can do that easily by clicking this rotate handle here, see? And if you hold on the shift key, it rotates in very obvious increments and you just want it to be parallel with the bottom line, just like this. And let's zoom in and then center it on the six inch vertical line, which is this line right here. If you're not sure, you can always double check by going back to the top. So this is the six inch line and we wanna center it on that. And it's easy to see how to position it because we can line up the center grid line with the buttons on our gingerbread man. But if you don't have that for some reason, your design is different, you can always look at the margins between the edges and these gr grid lines here. And you can see I need to move it over just a hair to get it centered, just like that. There we go, that looks good. Now just double check that, that the position on your mat matches the location of the image on the screen, and then click the continue button in the lower right corner to continue. We're almost ready to engrave. Step seven, get ready to engrave your cookie spatula. So turn on your Cricut Maker and move the star wheels all the way to the right side of the roller. Load your mat onto your Maker and follow the prompts on the screen choosing stainless steel as your material setting. 
Make sure you've inserted your engraving tip into your Cricut Maker as well. And that's it, you're now ready to engrave. Step eight, engrave your cookie spatula. When prompted, press the flash and go button on your Cricut Maker. This will start the engraving process. Now because it's going over the design three times for the deeper engraving, it's gonna take a little longer than you may be used to. For me, it took about 10 minutes. And now you can just watch it engrave a cookie spatula for you. Once it's finished, just unload your cutting mat and pull the tape off. And here's a pro tip. When you pull the tape off, use the adhesive side of the tape to press it onto the engraving to remove the surface metal shavings. Don't use your hand to wipe across the surface as you could end up with embedded bits of metal in your hand. Ouchie. And that's it. You now have an awesome cookie spatula with a cute little gingerbread man on it. Now let's take a closer look at how I did here. Now, if you observe it, you'll see that it doesn't quite look like it should. <laughs> it's, it's like offset. So I messed up when I did this and you are going to learn from my mistake here. What happened was when I initially put it on my mat, I put it too far up. So instead of listening to what I was supposed to do, which was to put it at the 10 inch mark, I put it a little above it because I don't know, I was thinking about cookies. Who knows what was going on in my head. I clearly wasn't thinking and not paying attention. And I didn't realize that it was a mistake until it was all done. And I only had one spatula for this tutorial. That is not going to stop me though from fixing this. So I am going to engrave it again I'm going to make sure that I understand what I did wrong so that you understand too. So what I think happened is I put it too far up on my mat. And when I did that, the bar on the Cricut hit the bend in the spatula and ever so, just, just barely, just enough that it pushed it back just a little bit when it did its additional passes. So when I look at, when we look at it when it's finished, it's just ever so slightly offset. So the key here then is to make sure that the flat part of our spatula is far enough down on that mat that it doesn't hit the bar. And I measured where it should be and we need to have at least a half an inch of clearance below the bottom grid on our mat. And I was just a little above that because I just wasn't paying attention. Right, I'm gonna engrave this again. And of course I don't have another spatula like that one to use. So I'm gonna use a pie server, but I'm just, instead of, I'm gonna pay attention to where the bend in my spatula is. And I'm making sure that it's at least a half an inch below the bottom grid line on my cutting mat. Other than that, I'm not making any changes. So if I'm correct, then when we when I finish cutting this, we will see a different result. So this is very important. So when you do this, <laughs> pay attention to where the bend of your spatula is. If it's too far up, if it's too far up on that mat, you will actually notice that it's hitting the bar. It'll jiggle a little bit as it each time it gets close to that. If you see that happening, pause take it out because you might be able to salvage your spatula and um, move it and then restart your project. Okay, got it? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and engrave this and then let and show you how it worked. Okay, it's all done. Um, I watched it really closely as I was engraving it and I did not see the same telltale issues where I did not notice that the bar was hitting the bend in the spatula at all. So I definitely fixed that. So the real key is gonna be whether my design is clear or offset like the other one, right? So the original one on the left is offset. You can see it has like, kind of like, you can see like three or four lines there. You can barely read the words. But look at the one on the right. It's lovely and clear and not offset. So that's the key. Make sure that you move your spatula down far enough that the bend is at least a half an inch 
below the bottom grid line on your cutting mat. And make sure you tape it down really well because if it moves at all, you're gonna get that offsetting effect as well. You guys say you like to see me leave mistakes in, so there you go. There's a big, huge, gigantic mistake. And I would have loved to have just redone this for you with another spatula so you could see it done properly, but I ordered it on Amazon. I didn't get it locally, so when I messed it up, you know, at 10 o'clock in the evening, thinking about cookies, <laughs> uh, we had to make two. Hopefully this will help you, though. Now, of course, if you're anything like me, you see the possibilities here for personalizing gifts, right? So let's say you're going to a party and, you know, you have to bring the pie or whatever or the dessert or whatever, the dish, you know, it's holiday time. Um, why not bring a beautiful host or hostess gift, of course, that's personalized to, who, you know, whom you're giving it to with their name, their family name, their first name, something they really like, whatever. To do that, I have made you a template of three different utensils that you can engrave. And let me show you. So among the file that you downloaded from my blog was a template file. So let's go upload that one so you can see what to do with that one. Because I'm so excited about making gifts for people that I need some templates, and so do you. So I created these templates of three things that I tried engraving on my maker and definitely work. You can get all of them on Amazon. You can probably get them elsewhere as also. Um, we bought the cookie spatula from Amazon. Let's hide our, um, let's hide our little guy here. There we go. Um, the cookie spatula, which is the one on the left here, we got off Amazon. But these two, we actually got an ace. <laughs> because like, I didn't want to wait for Amazon. Uh, but they also sell them on Am Amazon, so you can definitely get these. So the one on the left is the cookie spatula that you just saw me cut or engrave. The one in the middle is a nice, very nice turner with a pretty sharp edge, very nice, really high quality. It's not inexpensive, but it's not like, it's not crazy or anything, but it's definitely gift worthy. And then the one on the right is a really pretty polished stainless steel cake server or, or pie server. So these are all would make all great gifts. We've got cookies, we've got something that's more of a serious cooking implement, and then we've got dessert like the cake and the pie. Um, so you can use these as templates for creating a design. The, the section here at the top is where you put a design in. So this Christmas, I'm going to my sister and brother-in-laws, and they make the best food ever, and we should definitely bring them a gift. So I am going to use this really pretty cake server. I'm gonna click on text, and then type the family name. Now this is much too big, and also, and not in a very interesting font. Let's first resize it. So I just click this resize button in the lower right corner, and I click and drag it. Now I want to put it, set, you know, position it so it actually is centered appropriately on the server, so I can see how it looks on there. So I'm going to use the rotate icon and click and drag and hold on my shift key as I do it, and then it rotates it nice and evenly for me. So I think that's a little big, but still I don't like this font. It's boring. <laughs> so let's go look for. Um, I think there would be a perfect font called Elegant Cake. Yes, here it is. And what's great about this font is it's a multi-layer font. And if you use a multi-layer font, you can get an even better engraving because it's got two layers and they're very close next, right next to each other. So here is our font. Um, it's pretty, but the letter spacing is way off of it. So we're going to change that to I don't know, one maybe. It's closer. This is about the size we want. Let's go ahead and put it the right way so that we can work on it easier. I'm gonna move this over just a bit so we can see what we're doing. So we can see that there's way too much space between the T and the H and yeah. So we're gonna do advanced ungrouped letters so we have better control over what we're working with. Now I wanna just make this T bigger so I can kind of place it nicer like this. I'll do the same thing for the L and I'll put it here, which means, of course, I have to move over that A, and the rest of the rest of that, and the A there. There we go. 
So that looks pretty good. Lots of good space in between everything. Oh, this S is a little too far away. There, I like that. So let's select everything. And let's go look and see what it will look like when it engraves. So that looks excellent. So let's make sure that we attach this all together because we ungrouped, right, to letters. And so if you don't attach, then things won't stay together. You could also weld, but if you weld, you might actually lose the multi-layer part. Let's see what happens when we weld. Yeah, so don't weld. You only want to only want to attach with a multi-layer font. So there we have it now. Again, we want to duplicate it two or three times so we get that nice deeper engraving. So I'm duplicating it twice. Then I'm going to select all three of them and go up to align and align center. And now I am going to rotate it back into position, select all three and attach. Very important. There, lots of layers now. So we're going to uh, drag this over here and make sure it's still like the right size. I think it looks a little big right now. So I'm going to resize that in there. So that looks like it's going to fit nicely on the cake server. And that looks good to me. So now we're ready to engrave this. Make sure that we have everything set to engrave and everything is attached and it's rotated in the right position. Check, check, check. So let's make this. So click on make it. And just like before, you have to drag your design down to the bottom of your mat, the bottom center. So let's zoom in and make sure that we've got this really well centered. Right here it is. And you're going to want to just double check that this aligns with where you're putting your cake server. Uh, your cake server is longer than the cookie spatula is, so you're going to want to make sure that when you center it, you're not putting it too high up. Uh, otherwise, your design will be like really close to the bend, and it's better if it's centered in there. So just pay attention to that. The cookie server that I am using is, let me double check the measurement of this. It is, its flat surface is four inches long. And you'll notice that this area right here is only like under three inches. So we probably, so we'll either, so you have a choice here. You can either move your cookie or your cake server down a bit on your mat so that it's, instead of coming all the way up to the, you know, four, and she's because that's normally what you do. Maybe you bring it up to like three and a half on your mat. Or you can choose right now to center this within this two by four area, which is the size of your cake server. It's your choice. I think that I'm going to go ahead and bring mine all the way to the bottom and then just move my cake server down just a little bit so its tip is more like around the three and a half inch mark. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this. All right, so we place it on the mat in the right position. We make sure that the bend of our cake server or spatula, whatever we're using, is at least a half an inch below that bottom line on our cutting mat grid. And then we go ahead and engrave it. So it's all done. Let's see how it looks. Uh, don't forget to use your painter's tape to remove the metal bits rather than wipe them off with your hand or something else. And this is how it turned out, and I think it's beautiful. I love this. They're going to love it, too. And like it, it was, oh, goodness, I don't know. It took maybe three minutes, less than three minutes to engrave. I want to make these for everybody now. They, it was so easy, and they're going to think that, I don't know, that I had it, like, professionally done. It looks really good. I'm really pleased with these. So now you know what not to do. But, hey. I make mistakes so you don't have to, right? Right. Now, what I think is so cool about engraving cookie spatulas is that not only are they very easy to make, but they're inexpensive and they make a perfect handmade gift that you're gonna love to give people. If you pair them with a cookie mix and some baking mitts, maybe with a little awesome vinyl on it, they make a perfect little holiday gift for teachers, neighbors, or coworkers. And we may just have some really cute sayings for baking mitts coming up soon in a tutorial. That would be amazing for this. So stay tuned for that. Now, if you have enjoyed this tutorial, you have Jen Swift to thank. 
and you will absolutely adore her blog. It's over at wellcraftedstudio.com. She has lots of wonderful tutorials, including Cricut tutorials, and there's a fun tutorial on how to engrave spoons. Yes, spoons with your Cricut maker, and then turn them into bookmarks, yes. Plus a super cute tutorial on gnome mug cozies that you can also cut on your Cricut maker. Check her out at wellcraftedstudio.com. So if you have any questions about how to engrave metal, especially things like spatulas and stuff with your Cricut maker, please leave your question below this video, or you know what I'm gonna say, come on over to our Facebook group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. We have lots of engravers there. And if you don't have a Cricut maker to actually engrave your spatulas, be sure to enter my Cricut giveaway that's going on right now. And maybe you will win yourself a Cricut maker. Get all the details at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut giveaway. And that's it for today. Tomorrow, I'll be back to show you how to make a milestone blanket. Do you know what that is? No? Well, then come back and find out. <laughs> Remember, I'm always open to your project ideas. If you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.